Hey, this is Coach Jason here at Art of War MMA and Fitness. Today I want to show you one of our fence fighting sequences that we do. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm starting from the most standard predictable options such as an ankle pick or a front headlock snap down and I'm progressing to less predictable options, guillotines and the thing that I like to call the fence crucifix. So essentially this whole thing is like a front chin strap series. And again, I'm gonna be starting with some very standard stuff that a lot of people do and progressing to the fence crucifix, which is one of my favorite things because it's something a lot of people don't expect. So these sequences, these particular ones are gonna start from a nice underhook here where I'm controlling this underhook. Got his shoulder, I've got head position. Um, this is a, a lot of times a position that I'll first shoot for. Um, another thing that you can do from here um, before we do anything is, you know, a lot of times we wanna think about like making them uncomfortable, right? It could even be that I'll do something like a foot stomp, a knee to the thigh, I might knee with this leg even. There's even short punches that can happen here, but you know, when we're punching here, then we sort of lose control of that tie or that hand if we have it, okay? So let's just start with some really simple things that we could do. A lot of times too, he's wizarding, he's on defense, right? He knows that from here, I can change levels, I can attack crotch lifts and, and legs and so forth. So a lot of times guys are looking to, as I'm trying to like pick him up here, he's lowering his level here. So first thing I'll check for here is where that foot position on the fence is and where the weight distribution, right? If that foot's out from the fence just a little bit, you know, oftentimes, it doesn't even have to be out quite that far, but if it's out a little bit, you know, oftentimes it's super easy to just change your level, get that ankle pick, and then squaring up and creating that pinch, right? So now I'm in a situation where I've shelved that leg and I can deliver some nice punches. Oftentimes that foot will come out, right? And then I'm following that pressure, going to a leg drag position, potentially even the knee ride position. Um, a lot of times you're not going to be able to hold these fence positions forever, but if you can put yourself in a position where you can drop some really good strikes, um, great opportunity. Okay, so that, so that ankle pick is the first thing a lot of times I'll check for. Quite often people are expecting that though, right? Ankle pick is extremely common, right? So this can be a tricky thing to get. Um, sometimes just they're doing a good job distributing their weight there. Other times he'll peel my hand up, right? So it's a, on a skilled fence wrestler, it's going to be difficult to get the ankle pick. So a lot of times I'll use that as a decoy so that I can get the chin strap, okay? So, and what I mean by that, it's very easy for me to come down here and fake, come right over the top. Okay, and all I'm doing is changing my angle. So I was in here, I fake, I immediately switch my angle, I'm pulling with my underhook, coming over the top to my chin strap. I can drag him down with this here, right? I can drag him down and then switch to the outside. Okay, that's one way to do it. I can also just make my switch right from the get-go like that, controlling on his tricep, fake it, come over the top, collect the arm here, okay? Making sure our arms aren't too deep, either that way or that way, so then it's easier for him to counter. I don't want him to have my elbows, okay? So once we're here, boom. Coming here like so, putting my head in the hole like this, keeping my elbows tight. Now I can circle and snap. Okay. I can put pressure, I'm up on my toes. Notice I didn't come all the way down to my, to my knees like that. Now I'm in a position where I could come over the top and switch that. Once we get into side ride position, you know, a very easy thing, whether I'm glued in like this, whether I'm here, whether I've got them broken down, you know, a very easy thing is just realizing you've got three angles to punch from. I've got this angle, I've got this angle, and then if he's looking down, if he's blocking here and looking down, I've got under the armpit, right? So first thing you should do when you get here, check, check if they're open, <laughs> bap. Okay, I've got all three of these angles to strike at. Okay, so, so when wrestlers, whether they're holding here or whether they're holding here, you know, this is head in the hole. This is where my head belongs, okay? My head doesn't belong up here like this. It's so easy for Adam to get into my legs, to sit through, um, you know, a lot of counters, whereas, if I'm keeping my head to the outside there in this snap down position, right? And I've got his chin, I could be going like this. This is a nice way to hold it. I could be going like this, right? But either way, I'm not giving him my elbows and I'm keeping my head there so that I could, for example, come around like this 
Okay, I just like for MMA, it's a quicker transition to just bring your head over the top and you can get right into there. Sure. Um, but that stuff, people are going to expect that stuff, right? So that's why like a lot of times when I get to that chin strap position, I will bypass it and I will go to other things that people don't expect as much. Okay, so typically they're going to expect the ankle pick. If you can hit the ankle pick, great. Okay, they're going to probably expect it though, so I'll use that as decoy. When I get to this position, what I'll often do is I will immediately try to guillotine with this hand here by just passing their head through to my other hand. So if I've gotten him in this chin strap right here, which because I've got an underhook, it's not the most secure as far as dragging him down. A lot of times what I prefer to do is I'll just push that through to this arm. Now I've got my high elbow. Boom, I can go here. I can switch my grip to the cup and saucer grip. Now I can easily get my finish because his butt's against the fence and he can't even rise up, okay? So that's usually my first go-to is I pass it through to the other arm. So this arm was underhooking him. I fake, boom. I can come right here. I can pass it and now I've already got my high elbow, okay? I could just use this grip to finish. A lot of times I like to switch over to the cup and saucer grip pinching my elbows, and I do this scooping motion with my hips. Okay, so we're just... I also like to make sure that when you're, when you're finishing that guillotine that your head doesn't get too far separated up here, right? It's just a little bit looser than if I keep my head, if I'm doing this high elbow guillotine, if I keep my head close, whether I'm going here, see I'm keeping my head on the top of Adam's back, and my arms are tight, so now any motion I make goes right into his neck, okay? So that's, some people will not expect that. Um, but again, a lot of high elbow guillotines. Okay, another one that's even less common is if I find when I switch this, once I make this switch here, if I find that he kind of feels it coming, I can just use my forearms and push his head right into the middle. Okay, so instead of going all the way to the opposite arm here, I can simply go right to here. I'm just keeping one hand on his chin and I'm putting the other hand over the top and I'm gonna do my 10 finger guillotine. The 10 finger guillotine works great against the fence. Once again, I'm gonna be like T-Rex, right? I'm gonna be like this. I'm gonna glue myself to Adam. I'm gonna glue myself to Adam. I like to stagger my stance on this and I'm gonna do that scooping motion, okay? That's all I'm doing. I'm like, everything's glued. I'm scooping down and scooping up with my hips. What I tell my fighters is when you're doing this, okay? The other thing you need to be aware of is if you feel their head popping out, let it go. Now we're right in here on our nice double leg, right? However you like to finish your double leg, if you like to lift, turn, whatever. Okay, so option one, I hit the ankle pick, boom. Option two, I fake, I come here. I go to my front headlock, I drag him down. Option three, I pass it through to my high elbow guillotine with my opposite side that was my underhook. Option four, I leave Adam's head in the middle of my belly button and I go my 10 finger guillotine or if his head pops out, my double leg. The last option, knees. And once I've achieved this, there's actually a couple ways that this will play out. Option one, is they realize I'm kneeing him in the head and they can't block that, he drops to a knee. This is a perfect time to do the bulldog takedown where you just turn your hips. And all I'm gonna do is as I take him down, I'm gonna put this hand on the mat, I'm gonna just slide my right knee under his armpit. Now this hand's on the mat, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay really low, I'm gonna sit this foot out, I'm gonna go super slow on my partner, I'm gonna drop this elbow down, walk my hand out a little bit, slowly sit back and then and I don't want to hurt my training partner's neck I'll let that head pop out now we're in mounted crucifix right we'll do a separate video on mounted crucifix um, but this is obviously a really advantageous place to strike your opponent okay. so once you've once you've managed to attain the fence crucifix where I pass it. The other thing is when I'm getting this front crucifix, I drop my level down and I really punch those arms through so I can make that connection. So this motion with your body is gonna be really helpful 
at getting your arms connected when you're doing this bench crucifix. So man, passed it over. Boom, we're immediately landing three strikes. Maybe he goes down to a knee, maybe he doesn't, right? I can now do a back roll from here if I want to take him down. Because sometimes when people have both feet on the ground, it can be tricky to twist him down with the bulldog the bulldog uh, takedown. So all I have to do now, if Adam's head is in my right armpit, I'm gonna left. I'm gonna do a back roll over my left shoulder. I'm gonna flick him. Now my left hand, I plant it because this keeps his arm out of my business. I leave my hips up. I walk my hand underneath. Okay. So I land it on the mat like this. I'm planting my forehead on the mat. I'm, I'm lifting my belly up so I can creep that through to my own belly as high as I can get it up here. Now Adam's hand that he would hand fight with is totally out of the equation. Now I just get my grapevine. I'm gonna do a sideways crunch and I'm gonna drop my right elbow. Okay, really easy one-arm guillotine finish there. Okay.